This video is brought to you by Squarespace. You know, Game of Thrones didn't exactly end in the strongest way, but what it does have is strong costuming. I mean, who among us hasn't wanted to look like a Targaryen at one point or another? I certainly have. So you can only imagine my delight whenever I made a special trip to Joanne's for a completely different project. Why Joanne's? Why do you have to be an hour away? <laughs> only to have my heart stolen by this. For whatever reason, I keep coming back to this and I uh, just kind of want to make a corset out of it. I also had to get a yard of this for a different future project because, I mean, how could I resist? You know, sometimes you just see leather that looks like the skin of a dragon. My god, it's beautiful. So what are we going to be making today? A corset. Listen, it's been a while since I had a sewing machine and you guys know I can't go that long without making a corset. So this was the general inspiration for this piece. At first I was kind of thinking about something more structural like a full length Victorian style corset, but I also wanted to see if I could make it a little more functional and wearable. So I went in the direction of a shorter boosty style that still has that dragon theme. I'm basically going for a lot of edge and sharp shape so it gets the dragon concept across while still fitting into other aesthetics. And to make it more of a set, I also wanted to include some little cuffs and a bolero slash collar to take it back back into a fantasy direction. It definitely doesn't feel as straight up inspired by Hot D or Targaryens, which is kind of what I was going for so it doesn't feel too costumey. But make no mistake, it definitely ends up feeling costumey. Not that that's a bad thing. And listen, even if these pieces are a little bit too intense to be worn casually, they can still be appreciated at Ren Fairs and through cool pictures. You know, ones that can be displayed on a website, maybe a website hosted with this video's sponsor Squarespace. If you need a portfolio for your illustrations, your photography, or cosplay, you can easily build one with Squarespace. As an illustrator and costumer, I have a portfolio for both on my Squarespace website. And even though the phrase graphic designer is not in my skill set, building a website with Squarespace is still convenient because you can choose from dozens of professional and customizable website and portfolio templates that do the heavy lifting for you. Their drag and drop format leaves you free to focus on the details of your brand, like logos, text, colors, and the important stuff, like galleries. You can effortlessly drop in full galleries of your work with great features like automatic image scaling, which scale and position your pieces in a great format as soon as you upload them. And from there, you can add all the bells and whistles of your brand with audio, video, and image blocks, and you can get connected to your audience with email campaigns, members-only content areas, and an extensive set of audience analytics. And finally, you can earn a little extra cash on the side or start an entire business with their e-commerce platform, which hosts an extensive collection of features for the casual seller and the full-time entrepreneur. So if you need to host your fantasy nonsense online because you went a little bit overboard with your most recent project and now they won't let you inside the Walmart, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash pricklyalpaca to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you as always, and it really is always to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Now let's get started. Hello there. It's day one. I've got my fabric. I've got my design more or less figured out. So the order for today is patterning. This is completely 100% an impulse project. So whenever I do special corsets like this, a lot of the times I'm creating the pattern or the texture or the design on it myself, just so that I can bring some artistry and creativity to the project. And I'm obviously not really doing that this time. So the artistry and creativity that I am bringing so that I'm not just making a basic boring corset. I think this this time around is going to be focusing on making a really good pattern, something that's structural, something that gets the idea of a dragon themed corset across. So the things that I need to pattern are the corset, and then I'm also going to try to make a matching kind of collar slash bolero thing that I can attach sleeves to. I guess something to make it more of a set so that if I do wear it at a Ren fair or something like that, it's not just one piece and then I don't have anything that matches it. So I have a yard of this. That should be more than enough fabric for the bolero and corset for this project, but I don't have a lining yet and I don't want to put this just on my skin so let's go find one. Since our last sewing adventure I have upgraded from a cardboard box to an actual bin. We love that. Did I mention it is so heavy? I feel like this doesn't really match but it's a default option. I feel like this is what I need. Wait. I feel like this is what I need. <laughs> Get on over there. What are you doing trying to stay in this box? We might need more but we will cross that bridge when we come to it. <laughs> That's right, go inspect that. Meow, meow, meow. Meow. Uh, we also probably need welcome. Can you say welcome? 
she says hi. So Foresight Kira is once again providing the corset patterns for this video, and I have a couple of different ones that I can kind of splice together and use. They're somewhere in here. Mm -hmm. So I think the general strategy here is to do a little bit of Frankensteining because I have a couple of different corset patterns here and I like how some of them fit and are cut but like in different ways. So I think a fusion of the two of them is basically going to be what I'm looking for here. So I'm just going to get on my mannequin, get some paper and try to pattern out something that's gonna work. Let's go. <laughs> Uh, change of plans and then change of scenery. We're at Shiloh's now. Uh, now I'm gonna cut everything out. As usual, cutting is the bane of my existence, but luckily Shiloh had some set supervisors of her own to give me some moral support. Although I will say I could do without the studio interference. But just when you may have thought we were done, oh look at that, there's an entire lining that also needs to be cut out. I'm pretty sure I watched this entire video about how toxic America's Next Top Model was while cutting this, so just look at that number for a second and share my pain. Cutting things out took so long that it's a different day now. Have I mentioned how much I hate cutting things out? So next we've gotta do something pretty important that I probably should have done before now, but didn't. I need to do a test to see how well my machine even sews through this leather material. Uh, whenever I bought it, the people at Joann's seemed to think that it was nearly impossible. I think they were being a little bit dramatic. I sewed through a whole bunch of nonsense with my old brother's sewing machine, and it was not nearly as durable as this one. I think it's gonna be fine. I also got heavy duty needles, only three of them. Let's hope that I don't really need the other two. But I'm basically just gonna start assembling the cup, see where that goes. I think this will be a good test, so uh, come along. All right, moment of truth. Yay, we can sew through this. Take that, join Fabrics employees. I'm like afraid to go faster with this machine, even though I know it can, because it's loud and new. And it kind of scares me. Let's keep going. Okay. She's kind of a beast. I was definitely being a bit of a wimp with this machine at first because it actually shocked me that it could sew through a thick fabric like this so well, especially given my recent bad experience with faux leather. I mean, this is the kind of machine I was working with before. And people think that computers are gonna be able to take over. So with this new one, I was able to very quickly assemble and sew up the cups. Admittedly, not without a few skittish outbursts, but I mean, who can blame me? I've seen these x-rays. <laughs> But the cut pieces came together quickly and I was even able to sew down the seam allowances to get really crisp seam lines. And from there I dove right into sewing together the outer layer of the corset and this went so much faster than usual with this machine. I mean, I felt like Chevrolet, Corvette, Owen Wilson at the beginning of Cars. Speed. And before I knew it, the whole base of this corset had come together complete with clean, sewn down seam allowances. Wow. And even this early on, it's giving long neck noodle boy caraxes, which is always a promising sign. Now let's do the lining. Except, let's not, because this particular lining is not even going to matter very shortly. Yeah, I mean, all of this, j just disregard that because it doesn't. Okay, well this, I, I guess this is okay. I sewed up the bolero thing, you know, this thing that we haven't really paid much attention to. It got nice tacked down seam allowances and then look at it, it's doing what it's supposed to do, yay. I'm so proud of you. So I added a lining to the little spiky collar by sewing right sides together. I cut the corners off and added tension cuts on the curve so I could easily flip it inside out. I sewed down those edges and then I could stitch up a lining for the main shoulder piece. This one, the one I'm proud of. I used the same methods to assemble everything, sewing the lining right sides together, adding tension relieving cuts, flipping it inside out, and stitching down the edge for a clean finish. At this point I kind of got on a roll and also cut and sewed up some straps to go under the arms and across the collar. Those got some buckles and then were riveted to the main piece. Not unlike you dear viewer, who are surely riveted by this content. Wow.
I also went off script and made some bracers because, first of all, of course I did, but I also thought they would really complete the look and solidify this project's dragon punk energy. What would a rebellious teen look like in the Elder Scrolls Online? Bolero piece more or less done, but there is something that I want to do for this project to, like I said, add just a little bit of my own artistry to it. For my design, I want to add some dragon claws to all of the tips on the design for both the bolero and the corset. I have sewn a boning channel into every point on this, even the little points on the collar, and basically what I'm going to do, or try to do, is use some warbler to sculpt a little dragon talon claw, I don't know exactly what you would call it, onto the top of a zip tie, and then unpick the seams and then slip the zip tie in and use that with the little dragon talon as basically a little cap, just to give it a little bit more of a dragon motif. This is also a way for me to put a little bit more of my own fingerprints on this, because right now, so far, it feels like I took a cool fabric, made it into a thing, but the cool fabric is doing most of the heavy lifting, and hey, you know, I want to earn my keep here. So I decided to make the little claw pieces for this out of war blood. That's right, I said it. Go ahead, take a shot. Is my whole channel just a game to you? Is this all just a drinking game to you guys? I just heated up little strips and molded them into a point around the end of a zip tie and added a little definition for the nail bed. So uh, it's a pretty simple process. I just had to repeat that method about 8,000 times until I had this hefty little pile and then that wasn't even half the amount I ended up making for this video. You know, maybe you guys are right about the warbler. And now we are finally back to lining the corset. You know, that little catastrophe that I foreshadowed earlier. So let me explain to you the issue. Yesterday, we basically didn't get anything done. I'm pretty sure that a wasp just stung my finger. It doesn't hurt that bad, but I might be in shock. I don't know. When the two of us make amends. I just want to call Body language is a little defensive. I don't know if this is conducive to a healthy back and forth. Uh, come to me when you're ready to talk. Not for a lack of trying, but because fabrics were being difficult. Basically, I tried every which way that I know how to sew a lining into a piece like this, and none of the methods worked, and it was really, really obnoxious. That's the sound of antagonism. This fabric is bullying me. I think the biggest issue is with the outer material being so rigid and thick and basically just plastic. The inner lining material that I was using was just not conforming to that shape. I think I also didn't give myself enough seam allowance, so there was just too much tension pulling on the lining layer, and in the end, I probably could have made it work, but I really am trying to improve my sewing skills here. I'm just, I'm not gonna settle for that. Normally, to line a bodice, I would just put both pieces right sides together and then leave an edge open and sew around all the other edges, flip it inside out after I'm done. Not only is it like a rigid pleather type plastic that I'm trying to sew with, it also has all of these jagged edges. So it's basically impossible for me to do that method where I just flip it inside out because I don't think that the seams would stay without ripping out. Tension that that caused with the bottom edge, like I just couldn't really fold the edges in and get an even seam allowance. So the bottom line is I ripped that out. We're right back where we started with the lining and I also think that I'm going to have to recut it. I'm pissed off. What makes it even better, just so great, is that I do not have enough of this fabric left to cut a new lining out of it. Love that. I think that basically this is the fabric that I have to work with to cut a new lining. It's not the best. I would prefer the other one. It's also not terrible and I might might actually be able to cut along grain lines for this fabric. That's pretty important. And I didn't have enough of the other fabric to even attempt to do that. So this sucks. I really don't want to waste this lining fabric, especially now that I've already like sewn it. However, I still have some of this fabric left from a previous project. And now that I see it, I kind of want to make a little cute cropped bustier out of it. And I can use this to line it. So I think that I would get a lot of wear out of that this fall during the vampire months. So I think I'll set this aside, use it for that, and baby, we'll just cut another lining out and see if this works. Ah! Girl, we did it. I don't know how we did it, 
but we did it. So after the executive producer warmed up the outer layer a bit for me, I was able to sew the lining together and press those seams down. I began sewing the lining onto the outer piece by sewing the top seam right sides together and flipping it like I did earlier, and then I could top stitch down all of the boning channels. This is definitely not the best boning channel method because it has the potential to look like utter dirt, but it's easy and it works for me, so that's why I do it. So far, so good, it was still in the ugly stage, but mostly coming together, and uh, then I took a detour to make an entirely different video. Hello! It is now a week later. But now we're back to finish this up, and I think mostly what I have to do is finish up edges. I've got to sculpt some more little dragon claws, and I also have to sew the cups onto this main piece. The top looks so much better than it did. The inside of the piece is okay. So we've basically reached good enough. I'm happy with it. It's fine. And I understand this is a hot mess up here, but we're gonna cover that up and no one will be the wiser. So the issue with finishing up this bottom layer, as you can probably see, is the unevenness. Even though I cut this out of the same pattern, different fabrics are different and I'm gonna have to do just a little bit of creative adjusting as I finish up this bottom edge. And also have to figure out how to finish up the back because as you can see, that also is not the most even. We have a little bit more structural work to do before this is anywhere promising. Let's figure it out. This took an eternity to finagle and pin and it was equally obnoxious to sew up. I just, I don't even want to relive that experience, but we made it. We survived, and I was finally able to move on to finishing the back. I thought about doing this in a few different ways, but I decided to just go for some bias tape because I was so sick of turning corners in, and I just didn't care about the look of the back as much. I mean, who's gonna see it? You? I mean, I'm sorry to you if the back looks bad, but that's really not my problem. Also, it didn't really look bad, it's just a different corset than this corset. I also fixed this later, so it doesn't even matter. <laughs> Anyways, I encased the bottom of the cups with bias tape as well so that I could finally attach them to the bodice. And friends, this part scared me. There were at least four layers of faux leather involved in this process, and I really didn't know if she was gonna be able to make it. But this machine is a trooper, and we were able to make it work, and it looked so good. <sighs> like, honestly, I can't believe it. Wow, a sewing machine that actually works. Oh my gosh, have you guys seen this? It, it sews. Yeah, uh, Kira, it's not supposed normal. to do that. So after my miraculous discovery, it was grommet time, which wasn't as painful as it usually is. I got to use a hammer, which I don't know about you guys, is always the highlight of my week. After that, the construction of the pieces was pretty much done and they looked so good. Whenever a project actually comes out the way I want it, I tend to have this disassociative moment where I look at it and I'm like, wait a second, I made that? I didn't make that. At this point in the project, me and this piece shared that very moment. But we weren't done, no, 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 no. Now it was on to the artistic part of the process. Paint. It's time to break out the paint. Phthalo green, Prussian blue. Hi there, welcome to the final night. If you've ever wondered what I look like with my hair wet. <laughs> so I think, as always, with a lowercase t, that the only thing that I have left to do on this project is make more of these little claw things. <laughs> I did not realize how ridiculous my hair looked until I just watched that recording back. Sorry? I would also like to introduce you to a new friend that I got. His name is Nigel. Okay, hear me out. I kind of want to make a video where I sculpt hyper-realistic faces on all of my wig heads. Uh, comment below. Would you want to see that? Imagine this face, but realistic. Think about it. We're only making plans for Nigel.
this stuff is also really toxic, so I have this. I'm going to attach these is I'm gonna just put a little bead of hot glue on the end here and then just slide them into place and if there's any hot glue that's like a little bit too light and shows up too much I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of paint and cover it up and it's gonna stay that simple I also used a little bit of black gloss paint to blend the claws into the corset a little bit more and also used some watered down acrylics to darken the red bias tape on the back and with that it is time for the reveal Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this week's excursion into fantasy territory. I absolutely love how this came out. I'm very surprised that it came out as well as it did. Um, you know, I don't really know about the practical applications of this, but like for the cool factor, I'm very happy it exists. I really have just found my niche in making ridiculous themed corsets. So if you want to see me make a different ridiculous themed corset, please comment below. I'm still trying to improve my corset making skills. So I can always use more to make so that I can practice my skills and try to actually keep getting better at this. I know this is only the beginning. But anyways, hey, thank you so much for watching and being here with me today. But as always, the biggest thank you goes to my beautiful, voluptuous patrons and especially my executive producers. Brian, Phoenix, Rose Draconi, Ira, Danny Tanga, Rose Kofrick, Freedom and Gus Gus, Francesca Sliwa, Small Creeper, Meg Litch, Cat, Dodo, Zyel S, Shay Lee, Gray, The Cat's Bark, Alwyn Hayes, Thea Maia, Ruled by Pluto, Agent Sketchy, Wolven Underscore Arts, Corvid Dome, Lovisa, Eloquent Silence, In the Galaxy, Eno Sign, Meeks Hunter, Megan Penland, India Gloom, Hypnos, Reflings, Katie, Michael Twycross, Sweet Winter Garden, Gravity Drop, Bobo McFoe, Will Schmidt, and Bean the Bread. If you would like to become a patron and gain access to exclusive behind the scenes content on my videos, the link will be in the description. Anyways, I'll see you next week for some more nonsense. And I kind of like this trend that I've been doing of leaving hints at the end of, you know, my video for the next video. So your hint for this week is this. Is anyone surprised?